What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite depressing topic, failure. I feel like it's become something of a Silicon Valley buzzword to talk about failure like it's a good thing, but the truth is, over the course of my filmmaking career, I've failed way more times than I've succeeded. Failure has been a constant presence in my life as a filmmaker and a photographer, and nearly every film I've tried to make has been a complete and utter failure. And you know what? That's okay. It's so easy to look around at other filmmakers and think that everyone's living one success after another. It's like everything they make becomes a Vimeo staff pick or every project that they pitch gets funded somehow. But that's not reality. During my time as a filmmaker and photographer, I've pitched literally hundreds of projects to different outlets from tiny blogs you've never heard of to giant international publications and streaming platforms. And the huge majority of them, like I'm talking 90% or more, have been rejected. I think these days, especially in the age of social media and constant sharing, a lot of people, especially creative people, like to put their best foot forward and show only the highlights. And that's cool, I get it but it's really not what life as a filmmaker photographer is like. Most of the time, I am a total failure. I've been lucky enough to get some really cool jobs shooting for big name clients like Netflix and Nat Geo and all those kinds of people, but the reality is that I miss way more times than I hit when it comes to pitching my own films. This is a channel for filmmakers and I call myself a filmmaker, which I am, but the truth is that almost none of my films actually get made. And some of the ones that I do finish never see the light of day because no distributors are interested. It's a tough thing to swallow, but it's the truth. I've pitched a ton of different kinds of stories. I've pitched happy stories, depressing stories, dangerous stories, adventure stories, all sorts of stuff. It's not like I just keep trying the same thing over and over and getting rejected. I've even gone to multi-day workshops where the entire point is to teach you to become a better pitcher. But even after all that, I'm still rarely successful in getting funding for my own films. Scrolling through Instagram or watching big name YouTube channels, it's really easy to feel like everyone but you is getting their films made. When you're not having that kind of success, it can be really depressing. Believe me, I know. Just to give you one recent example, I teamed up with a local production company here in Vancouver and we spent six months developing a pitch that we thought was perfect for one of the big uh, national funding agencies. We went through multiple rounds of feedback and every step of the way, people seemed to be telling us that they thought it was a good fit and I was really confident that it was gonna be made. I even started planning shots in my head and writing scripts and all the things you would do to make a real documentary, just assuming that we were gonna get funding. Then a couple months ago, in the final stage, we found out that we were rejected. It was pretty devastating. My first reaction was to get mad. I started yelling and ranting about how I'd never pitch again and how it was just so much easier to take paying DP jobs on other people's projects and just wasn't worth the hassle to go through all of the stages of pitching to get rejected again and again. I mean, what's the point of going through all that work, making pitch decks, having tons of Zoom meetings and phone calls if nothing gets made? But after I'd calmed down a few days later, I was able to think about it and realize that even though most of these films are failures, in the end, I always learn something from each of those experiences and they've made me a way better filmmaker. Like I said, I've had so many projects fail that I couldn't possibly fit them all into a single video. Instead, I'm gonna talk about one film that I made when I first moved to Mexico City with my friend Jordi. Just a warning, it's a fairly intense story. It's about a bartender named Mario living in one of the most dangerous states in Mexico. And it's about his search for meaning after his brother was kidnapped by cartels and never came back. I'll just play a minute and a half or so of the trailer that we made so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. A mí mi juventud me amanecía en un baile 3, 4 de la mañana. Ya se oía de cosas feas. Secuestraron al, al cazarrubia, secuestraron al tortillero. Mataron a las del Pozole. Pero yo decía, no no haciendo cosas malas. Ando trabajando. Pagamos cuota, mi hermano pagó cuota. 
porque yo fui el negociador con mi hermano. A veces se dice uno que algo hizo uno mal, porque no te lo regresaron. Que nosotros hemos encontrado más de 200 cuerpos cuando no tenemos ninguna especialidad. Éramos gente con otro tipo de trabajo. O yo era repartidor de cervezas. Y ahora me he vuelto un buscador. All right, so it's a little bit rough. It's a few years old, and you know, if I could shoot it again now, I'd probably do a bunch of things differently, but whatever, that's not the point. Even if I don't love all the cinematography that we did back then, it's still a really powerful story, and I think one that should have been told. I took this trailer with me on a trip to New York and showed uh, editors at the New York Times, The New Yorker, NBC, a, a bunch of other big name broadcasters, and they all loved it. There was a ton of interest right off the bat and everyone wanted to see more. I thought for sure we were going to have no problem finding a home for this thing. I went back to Mexico City and Jordi and I locked ourselves in a room and edited what we thought was a really great rough cut. Then we sent it out to all those people who said they loved the story so much and waited for the good news to come in. But that didn't happen. One after the other, rejection after rejection came in, and nobody wanted it. To say we were disappointed would be a huge understatement. Beyond all the time and money that we'd personally spent, we'd taken up a huge amount of Mario's time, and I really felt like I owed it to him to get his story out there. It was really disappointing and depressing at the same time, and we just couldn't figure out what had gone wrong. Again, my first reaction was to get mad. The editors didn't know what they were talking about, or they were too scared to publish an edgy story, or I had all sorts of excuses. In those kind of situations, it's always easier to think of ourselves as a misunderstood artist and to say that everyone else doesn't get the point. It took a long time before I was able to see clearly that the problem wasn't with the editors. Actually, the editors were right. The problem was that we hadn't told a good story. There was a good story there. We just hadn't done a good job of telling it. We didn't really do a good job of establishing story progression or tension, and we never laid out what it was that Mario wanted, so in the end there couldn't be any sort of resolution. We just basically made a vignette of his life, and even though it was intense, it wasn't a story. It was totally our fault, and only once I accepted that uh, was I able to start moving on and learning from that mistake. The point is that even though that project was a total failure by almost any metric, I mean, we spent thousands of dollars of our own money and wasted months and months of our time and Mario's time. It actually taught me a ton about filmmaking, and I don't think I would have been able to get that information out of any sort of course or book. I had to learn those lessons myself. And so when I look back at all the failed projects in my career, which are many, I realized that it was through those failures that I really learned what I needed to know and started to grow as a filmmaker. It was way more valuable in the long run than just having one shining success after another. A lot of the times the real learning and improvement comes when you swing and miss. What's important is that you keep swinging, even when you seem to be missing all the time. I guess what I'm trying to say is that even though I'm a near total failure as a filmmaker, I still have a great career and I still love trying to make my own films. I have another pitch meeting coming up in a couple of days. I haven't stopped pitching just because I haven't had a lot of success. In fact, it's actually inspired me to try even harder. So if you're dealing with a bunch of failures right now, I know it's disappointing, I know it sucks, believe me, I feel like that constantly. But you have to look for the lessons in each of those failures because that's what's gonna make you good in the long run. The projects that succeed are great. You feel good for a few weeks or days or whatever it is, but sooner or later things go back to normal and it's on to the next thing. It's the projects that didn't succeed, 
like Mario's story, for example, that have stuck with me the longest and taught me the most about filmmaking. It's all about finding meaning and learning from those failures. If you can do that, you're gonna be so much better off. I still feel guilty for letting Mario down, and that's probably never gonna go away. His story deserved better than what we did with it, and that's my fault, I'm gonna have to live with it. But in hindsight, that failure led me to getting way more serious about studying story structures and trying to figure out where we went wrong, and I really believe that I'm a much better filmmaker now because of it. So enjoy the process and learn from mistakes, because in the end, that's what's gonna make you a really good storyteller. So let me know in the comments what your worst failure was. Then we can all feel like failures together. See ya.